Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part three of my trigonometry tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to cover isosceles right triangles. I'm going to cover 30, 60, 90 triangles, units, circles, a whole bunch of trig functions and angles and rules and a whole lot more. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. All right, so the very first thing I want to do is I want to talk about isosceles right triangles. And they're very simple to understand. They are triangles in which... You have, this of course is 90 degrees, and the other two angles are equal, or 45 degrees. And also what is true is these legs right here are also equal length. Another thing to be aware of is that if you have any triangle and it contains three angles, which they all do, you know that they are going to sum to 180 degrees. So we just come in here and we'll say, we'll mark this as H. We know that if we have our angle B, which is 90, plus C, which is 45, plus A, which is also 45, of course, that equals 180 degrees or pi radians. Another thing to be aware of is let's say that we have sine of 90 this is going to be equal to 1. And as we talked about in previous tutorials, 90 degrees is pi over 2 radians. Well, in this situation, if we go and get sine of pi over 2, of course, this is also going to be equal to 1. Now, we have something else, and it is called the inverse sine. And it is either written as sine with a negative one exponent or as arc sine. On your calculator, it's probably written this way right here. And if we have sine of some angle and it is going to be equal to one, then the arc sine of one is going to tell us our angle. So it's either going to be pi over 2 or 90 degrees in this specific situation. Now something else to think about when we're dealing with isosceles right triangles is as we saw previously, if we have the line segment AC, which is our hypotenuse over here, make sure you're aware this is an H for hypotenuse. This, of course, is going to be equal to the square root of AB squared plus BC squared. And in this specific situation, if AB is equal to BC, then we're going to refer to both of them using just L because they are equal in length. Well, then in this situation, AC is going to be equal to the square root of 2L squared, which is going to be equal to L times square root of 2. And for example, if L is equal to 4, then AC is going to be approximately equal to 5.66. And if AC is equal to 5.66, then L would be equal to 5.66 divided by square root of 2, which is equal to approximately 4. Now let's move on to unit circles. And as this tutorial continues, you will see how useful they are. Now a unit circle is just a circle in the center of a coordinate plane with a radius of 1. And in this situation right here, both of these angles are going to be equal to 45 degrees or pi over 4 and both legs we can mark these with L's as well both legs are going to be equal to 1 over square root of 2 or you could rewrite this as square root of 2 over 2 so if you wanted to know what the coordinates of C was in this situation. And I'm gonna show you different ways to find that. In this situation, 
C's coordinates on the xy axis would be square root of 2 for x, square root of 2 for y. And that's for 45 degrees. Very important to remember that. Also, on top of that, based off of our coordinate system we have here, in this situation, this would be negative square root of 2, of course, square root of 2 divided by 2. Down here, both would be negative. And then down here, the x, of course, would be positive, and the y would be negative. And that's for all those 45 degree increments around your circle. And then, of course, also these line segments, like I said before, square root of 2 over 2. And that brings us to 30, 60, 90 triangles. So, if we have here a situation where our angle A is equal to 30, B is 90, of course, and then we know what? From what we talked about previously, if you add up all these angles, they have to be equal to 180. Well, in that situation, we know that this angle right here is going to be equal to 60 degrees. And what's great about these is if you have the length of one side, you're going to be able to find all of the others. So if you want to find the length for S, that is going to be equal to one half of the length of the hypotenuse. And if you wanted to find the length for F, that is going to be square root of three times the length of the hypotenuse divided by two. So for example, let's say if H is equal to six, then S, of course, is going to be equal to 3. Just divide 6 by 2. Now you have S. And then F is going to be equal to square root of 3 times 6 divided by 2, which is going to be approximately equal to 10.39 divided by 2, which is approximately equal to 5.19. Let's go into another example. Let's say this guy right here is going to have a size of 12. And let's say that this angle down here is 30 degrees. Or actually, let's say it's pi over 6 degrees. Well, just to get practice, converting this into degrees, 180 times pi. Of course, the pi's cancel out. We're left with 180 divided by 6, which is equal to 30 degrees. All right, so that's converting from radians to degrees. Now, if we want to find AC, let's go and change this. Letters around a little bit. Change this to B, change this to C, change this to A. So AC in this situation is what we're looking for. Well, this would be 1 half times 12, which is going to be equal to 6. And AB is going to be equal to? square root of 3 times 12 over 2, which is approximately equal to 10.39. And if we would go and get the cosine of 30 degrees, we would find this is equal to 8.66. And just to verify, that's if we would plug that into our calculator. And if we would divide 10.39 by 12, we would also get 8.66, or we would get 0.866, all right? Now, something that's really interesting is with a unit circle, the x-coordinate is the cosine of whatever your angle is, while the sine is going to provide the y-coordinates. So, for example, if you have some angle here equal to 30 degrees or pi, over 6. Well, because this is a unit circle, we know that our hypotenuse is going to be or have a length of 1. Well, in this situation, we could find x cosine, which is equal to, as we saw previously, the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. Well, we know the hypotenuse is 1 with a unit circle. And by adjacent, I'm referring to this line. This is the opposite line, all right? Well, hypotenuse is equal to one, so that means our adjacent, which is the adjacent, as we saw previously, is equal to 
square root of 3 times h divided by 2. So this means that the x coordinate is going to be equal to square root of 3 over 2. And that's using cosine for the x coordinate. All right, so if we want to find the y coordinate for these points, we would use sine of whatever the angle is. Sine, remember, sokatoa. So, sokatoa, opposite, hypotenuse. And we saw previously the opposite is equal to whatever one half of h is. Well, h is equal to one. So that means that the y coordinate for this 30 degree angle is going to be equal to one half. And what is great here is all we need to do, if we want to find all of these different angles, so we have zero and we have 15 and we have 45 and 30 and 90 and just keep going on and on and on. All we're really going to have to do to go and be able to find the sine and cosine of 16 different angles is just to memorize a couple numbers. So if we know that the first one, square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half, and then we have square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2, and one more, which is 1 half. It's the opposite of what we have first. You just to memorize these really three numbers, but however you want to refer to it. And then also know that this information is true, which of course you do because you've taken algebra and such. You know this quadrant's plus plus. You know this quadrant over here is negative plus. You know this quadrant here is double negatives. And this quadrant right here is a positive and a negative in regards to x and y. Based off of this tiny little bit of memorization, you're going to be able to calculate over 16 different versions of cosine and sine. And just so it's 100% concrete, the x coordinate is going to give you the cosine of whatever the angle is, and the y coordinate is going to give you the sine of that angle. All right, so there you go. Whole bunch of new stuff in your head. And like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.